So I was looking into today's news on Fox News Channel, and we have this um, article saying Brian Koberger case, knife shift points to a possible target, experts say. So um, it's very interesting because I was deciding to do some investigation on who uses a knife and what type of uh, crimes. And I found on Google a lot of sources saying that knives are used for personal murders because it's a very close-up murder. You, you know, you look into the eyes of the person. It's usually made with revenge. You want to, um, like it's a, a uh, people who choose knife it's are people who are had enough or people who want to prove that they are dominant over the other people. Also it says here that knives are tools used amongst the white uh, type of um, crimes and I really like here where it says knives and sharp instruments are also commonly used by terrorists and people committing hate crimes, especially against LGTB individuals. Um, so we can see here that they are committing hate crimes. That means that uh, there should be some type of relationship between the people who were killed and the killer. Uh, the other thing I found interesting uh, reading all this article, it basically repeats the same thing, and I found it interesting that they are saying right here that uh, leaving a shift uh, behind, which is a gigantic misstep, and uh, that's how they provided DNA, Koberger's DNA, and it's interesting that this type of um, DNA that they found there is a touch DNA. Uh, which comes from skin cells and you know touch DNA can be transferred also it can stay mm -hmm. something for a long time <coughs> excuse me so my belief is that they will argue against that um, although it's very strong they still have a lot of DNA to process so if that's the only DNA that's linking uh, Koberger to the murders then they will have to actually prove that uh, he didn't sell his gun or he didn't touch it at a party or uh, somehow he, because you know during this crime he had um, gloves and having gloves on your hand uh, would be really hard to have some type of DNA left on objects unless he didn't clean it well before the crime but I, um, it's like, you know, I'm not defending him it's my opinion that this is a small uh, DNA. I mean, it's big that it's linked to him, but because uh, many things uh, show him as a suspect, but um, attached DNA, it's like, you know, maybe he sold his knife or maybe he wanted to buy a knife and he just touched it when he met someone on offer up or it can be so many explanations to that. So I'm very curious to find out how he's gonna explain how his DNA from his skin cells could land on that knife ship. And the other things I hear are saying, they are saying about the car, how his car was pinpointed. And I was looking at his PDF and it's interesting that I like how here it says that investigators believe that Koberger is still driving the 2015 white Elantra because his vehicle was captured on December 13th, 2022 by a license plate reader in Colorado. So they actually have a license plate reader that captured his car, yet uh, I haven't seen yet uh, them, say them saying that they uh, could see his car license plate from uh, captured by a reader or by a camera from on freeway or any other streets from Pullman to Moscow. Uh, you see where I'm going? It's like uh, somewhere they can say for sure it's his car because there is a license plate reader. But here when we talk about such a huge crime, they don't mention it as being uh, tracked by a um, camera. What they are doing, they are saying that, I think on page five, um, uh, no, 
I forgot which page, but they are saying that what they did, they actually uh, tracked his car by inquiring and then a officer or a guard at the University of Washington said, yes, hey, we have here such car and car, uh, car and car with Pennsylvania numbers on, which are linked to Koberger. And then they say that his license plate looked like, uh, a license, driver license looked like he has bushy uh, 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 eyebrows, which is consistent with what the roommate that was alive uh, said uh, that she saw a person in the dark with his uh, bushy eyela uh, eyebrows. And it's interesting to me also because if it was dark, she, it was hard to see. I'm not saying anything against the girl. It's just I really have a question how um, she could wait for eight hours to call uh, police. In my opinion, when you're scared, you just call right away, especially if she heard that there someone was crying, a loud thought, the dog was barking uncontrollably. So, you know, if she, and she says she was in a, it says that uh, she was in a state of shock. And then they say that that was a party house, so they never actually knew who is coming, who is going. So maybe she thought it's someone just leaving. But you see, it's not consistent. I mean, I don't know what made her wait so long to call. Um, but for me personally, it's like when you're scared, they just call. It doesn't matter what they will find out. They can find out that you did drugs, you're drunk or whatever. But, you know, you call because you're scared for your life. Um, but again, I'm not going to say what's happening with her because I am not in that position. I don't want to be in that position. I have no idea what's happening. I think in time they will show it to us. And... Um, I wanted also to mention something else, and I forgot what. <laughs> um, so let's see, we have his DNA, we have his car, oh, his cell phone. They are saying that his cell phone was pinpointed, a cell phone that was uh, from AT&T, and that they can, pin they say the last four of his number, and it's pinpointed to the place where the crimes were, and uh, starting in, um, I believe, June 22. And, you know, this is a party house. Maybe he was going to those parties. Maybe he knew these girls. But still, if it's only on several occasions, I mean, it's very suspicious that he was um, seen or his cell phone was pinpointed around the crimes. And I, I think if he has a good explanation why he was around those places, um, it can be maybe helping him unless he doesn't have how to explain how his cell phone was pinpointed to a crime, how his car was pinpointed to a crime. Uh, I, uh, I'm trying to understand all these factors. I'm trying to understand um, if that small touch DNA is enough to convict a person. I mean, I'm selling stuff on um, offer up, so <laughs> uh, I... Uh, I know if even something happens, uh, I can provide an alibi. So we don't know anything about his alibi. We don't know uh, how he's explaining everything. So far right now, he's a suspect. He's not convicted. And um, I, uh, I don't know. I want to uh, um, understand how this worked for him. And I'm sorry for the victims as well. Oh, and this is what I wanted to... Um, point and let me really quick um, oh, I don't have it in my phone anymore um, but uh, they were saying oh here I have it but uh, it says that uh, let me go to the article BTK serial killer let me do this BTK oh here oh it's right here on the page so I watched an interview from uh, BTK daughters and she said that because they, uh, the person uh, who was in the same, uh, like doing the videos about her dad, Catherine Ramsland, was his, uh, was Brian's teacher. She was thinking that she probably, he probably was talking to BTK, and she was saying something about his initials and how 
uh, BTK likes puzzles and um, you know I was thinking about that for a while but then they received also in an email that BTK says he didn't contact him he never talked to him so I see how um, maybe uh, he, BTK's daughter was thinking about it because from Catherine Ramsland's words we know that uh, he was talking in uh, uh, like you know he liked puzzles and all that and if you look at the house number of the victims their house number is 1122 which would be November 22 or maybe it means one and one two and two like a pair of each like uh, one pair of a boyfriend girlfriend and one pair of girl girl we don't know what relationship uh, the, other gr the girls had maybe they were just friends uh, I cannot say, but using a knife it's a very personal, very personal offense. So I'm, I really want to see what he has to say. I want to see what is going to happen. Um, in court, he seemed to be very um, uh, calm, responding to the questions. And I don't know is that a tactic, um, as in uh, he committed these crimes, but. Um, he knows how to present himself or because um, you know if they are saying that he was some type of freak some type of a person who wants to defend himself who wants to be the smarter person in the room and all that so I don't know I um, I see him calm and I uh, just um, really inclined to believe that if he has a good alibi and if police cannot provide our DNA rather than touch DNA then maybe there is a possibility to show for sure where his location on cell phone was maybe he could be innocent we don't know uh, sometimes I, when I look at find my phone um, for my husband I I can see him somewhere in one direction and then not where he is or for example he's driving with my son so he's like way up front my son is somewhere in there in the same car so I'm sure that police have uh, can I mean AT&T can provide a better a deeper understanding of where his cell phone was pinpointed and if he can explain why he was doing that um, I uh, in my opinion, if he was so fascinated with crime and he wanted to do a crime that will enter in history and people will write books about him and so on, he would do a couple of them. And if he wanted to do puzzles, he probably would choose something different like 1022, a house or something else, you know, to... Um, Maybe I was even thinking that when he was found in Pencil in Moscow, he did the killings. There is a Moscow uh, one hour away from his parents' house. Maybe I was thinking maybe he was going there to do that too. Or maybe because uh, um, I was thinking uh, in the um, media, they were saying that he's a, a serial killer or he was fascinated with serial, serial killers and maybe he wanted to be one. So I was thinking he might think to commit crimes in different parts of the uh, United States that have a Moscow city or a Moscow name. And that uh, I was thinking also that uh, uh, all these states, majority of states of Moscow cities have death penalty. So I was thinking he would like, you know, maybe to make a book about him or something where it says like how a serial killer avoided um, to be caught in uh, cities with death penalty or Moscow serial killer. But I'm trying to, uh, I heard a good point today that where it says that the parents are trying to protect their kids all the time, you know, and his parents was trying to protect him. So I'm, I'm just thinking, uh, what if he's innocent? I'm thinking of that, or if he's not innocent, did he commit any other crimes? So this is a very interesting and detailed case and I'm sure we're gonna hear a lot about it. For right now, we just want to say that he is still just a suspect. He is not um, convicted yet. And um, I just uh, um, want 
police to find the real killer and not, you know, like concentrate, for example, on Brian Koberger and maybe he's innocent and then the real killer has more time, it's on the loose to do something else. Time will show and it'll be interesting to find out what you guys think.